know and love, as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us to mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We will now have our readings.
She was proud to produce a quilt for each grandchild as they graduated from high school. Sharon had an amazing sewing room, which she also used to assemble dollhouses. Sharon made the best homemade fried chicken. It's all in caps, so I assume it was very, very good. <coughs> Sharon enjoyed traveling, whether it be to visit distant cousins, travel to Las Vegas for a daughter's wedding, or in the past few years to Florida with her sister Marilyn and her niece Linda and grandnieces. While young, Sharon spent priceless time with her aunt and uncle Clifford and Mary Lisney in Esmond, North Dakota. They helped mold her into the person she grew to be. Sharon shared the love of Mary and Clifford with her own daughters, who grew to love them as grandparents. Sharon was preceded in death by her parents. Also preceding her in death were his a sister, Shirley DeFader, infant sister Mary Lou, and a brother, Alan Trimborn. Surviving her is her husband, Galen, of 57 years. Her daughter is Lolly, her husband, Jeff Orsi, Lene Bowler, and Toletta, her husband, Isaac Larson, all living in my not close to their parents. Each daughter gave Sharon three grandchildren, whom she loved more than anything. Sharon was part of each grandchild's growing years, whether traveling to rugby or Granville, or watching a sporting event, or just babysitting. Grandma thoroughly enjoyed her time with the kids. Each has their own special memories with their grandma Sharon. Alex with Chaslin Donovan Borzy, Nicholas with Courtney Borzy, Len and Morrissey all reside in Minot. Kyle with Amanda Randolph Mueller, Cody, Emily Krieger Mueller, and Henry Lynn Larson live in Minot. Emily with Clay Altapeter Moeller lives in East Grand Forks, Minnesota. Hannah Moeller and Colin Moeller live in Rugby. Two special grandchildren who recently became a part of Sharon's life were Clayton Demarest and Kirsten Godel. Get up. The girls, these girls joined the family through Alex and Chaslin. Sharon is also survived by her sister Marilyn, with Frank Reese Carlson, who live in Bismarck. Marilyn and her family spent time with Sharon while she was hospitalized. Sharon was grateful for this time that they shared. She and Marilyn shared a special sisterly bond. Sharon is survived by her brother-in-law, Roland Nelson, and sister-in-laws, Linda Jo Williams, and Lorraine Amrine. She also has numerous nephews and nieces and brought, that brought her joy through the years. Most notably, Darren Otto, who has become very close to Sharon and Dale. Thank you for those words. grace and peace to all of you from God and from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Sharon uh, was one of the first people that I met when I started here at Hope about a year and a half ago. Um, her and Dale would sit together, kind of like right around here, um, and they would be in that spot pretty much every single Sunday. She was a fixture here, whether on Sunday mornings, or the quilters, or throughout the years in the various places um, that she helped out. I loved getting to know her and hear about the things that she loved, uh, seeing her quilts, but especially hearing about her kids and her grandkids, which is pretty much the topic of conversation if she wasn't talking about her quilts. Sharon lived a wonderfully full life, as we just heard in that reading, and that just you know, skims the top of it. Not just full in the sense that she lived long enough to be able to enjoy so much time with her grandkids, but also full in the sense of abundance. Abundance in the holiest sense of the word, which is to say her relationships, caring for people, her honesty and kindness, her faith and love. She was a woman who put people first, they were very important to her. Married for 57 years to Dale, with whom she created a warm home for their three children. She was a solid rock to her family, 
a foundation for her kids and then her grandkids. She is the kind of woman who leaves a tremendous impact and an incredible legacy of love and joy and kindness. I know that she will be really missed. And now this morning, we gather to give thanks for her life, even as we mourn together and grieve her passing. And yet we also gather to give thanks for the continuation of her life that goes beyond death as well. We celebrate together the continuation of Sharon's life in glory. Jesus says in John 14 that we just heard, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. <coughs> I just love this passage. Because we do so often have many things that trouble us in our lives. Sharon certainly did as well, just like we all do. But Jesus here reassures us that whatever happens in our lives, in the end, we will be with Christ. That God has made a loving home for us. That Jesus goes and makes our room ready for when it is time. Taking care to prepare it just right. And then will personally come and take us home. So now Jesus has come to take Sharon to her eternal home with God. And we have our reassurance of this through what Christ has done. We heard earlier in the service, at the beginning, uh, from the Apostle Paul, as he says in chapter 6 of the book of Romans, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. In Sharon's life, she lived to the Lord. Not just because she followed Christ's call and claimed Jesus as her Lord, but most especially because Christ claimed her. Way back on the day that Sharon was baptized, God made a public vow to her that she would forever be God's beloved child, no matter what. And now in her death, Sharon has completed her baptismal journey and is at home with God. <coughs> in both her life and her death, God has claimed her. Not because she was an amazing person, even though clearly she was, God claimed Sharon as God's own beloved child because of what Christ has done, drawing us all together into the body of Christ, so that as Christ dies, we too die. But also as Christ was raised from death into new life, so we too, and so Sharon too, has been raised from death into new life in God. And so today, we give thanks to God for Sharon, and ask God to comfort us in our grief. We give thanks to God for her life, for her unwavering love, and for her legacy that we will always remember and keep with us. Thanks be to God.
the beginning uh, of it, the small numbers on the front, page 282. Um, as we get to the end, um, something I like to do at memorial services is that when you get to the section that says the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, uh, let's try to get a little extra kick to it uh, and maybe just say it a little bit louder as we proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We'll now just have a short moment of our prayers of intercession. Um, so whenever I say, God of mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, Hear Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Hear give courage and faith to all who mourn, and a sure and certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, Hear grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, help us, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever.
Thank you.